What's up guys, in today's tutorial, we're going to be learning about instancing in Vector3 inside of Roblox Studio. Let's go over to Server Script Service, opening up our script, and we can get scripting. So I want to explain what instancing and Vector3 is inside of Roblox Studio, and the best way I know how to do this is simply to give examples. So first off, instancing is about creating objects, and Vector3 is a way to represent 3D positions and sizes. Let me show you how we use instancing. So I'm going to say local part will be equal to and there's where we write out the word instance just like this with a capital i so we have this instance right here and we say dot new so what this is going to do is going to create a new instance and whatever we put inside of these parentheses with quotation marks is going to create one of those so as you can see just from this list of items right here we can create a player an animation a humanoid a frame a part int value attachment folder all these different things i'm just going to create a brand new part so here's about how we use instancing we say local part equals instance.new and then we can create a part or we could create a folder or an animation or whatever you want to do right but we can also change the properties of that part let's say I want the part to be anchored and let's set that equal to true and let's say part dot can collide will be equal to false that way we can go through it and then last but not least we're going to say part dot parent will be equal to game dot workspace so that we can see it a cool trick about this is that it's always best to put the part dot parent or set the parent of the part itself to game dot workspace or wherever you're parenting something after you've already changed all the properties. It's a lot better performance wise for your game and overall just better. So if we were just to run the game right here, you can see it's going to create a brand new part inside of our workspace. And if I move the spawn location, you can see it is right here and that's pretty cool and all. But that's not where it stops. Let's say you saw how it was kind of in the middle of the ground right there. Let's say we wanted to raise it up out of the ground. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna press stop, go inside of our script. I'm gonna say part dot position. Now position, as I just told you guys, vector three handles those positions and sizes. So part dot position is gonna be equal to vector three. Now vector three, it represents a 3D value with a direction and a magnitude. So we're gonna say vector three dot new with parentheses. And here's where you get to create three different numbers for the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. I'm just gonna put zero for the X axis and each one of these is separated by a comma. I'm gonna do about five for the Y axis and then another zero for the Z axis. So let's go ahead and click on run and you can see this time the part is now floating five studs above where it was and that is very very cool so let's go ahead and stop the game you can also use negative numbers inside of here but i don't see why you'd want to do this unless you're doing something else with it and we want to change the size now so i'm going to say part dot size and this is going to be equal to vector 3 dot new and using that same exact thing as we did up here, we can do several different numbers. So I'm just gonna do five, five, and five for all three different axes. And let's click on run. So when we run the game, you can now see this is a very large cube. And that is how we use instancing and vector three that's about all there is to it with vector three and instancing of course there are much more complicated things you can get into but we're going to be saving those for the advanced tutorials thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as i did make sure you like subscribe and comment down below i'll see you in the next episode bye